So we made a quick stop at JDM Source, and lucky for us, they were carrying a pair of front lower control arms for the FD. And these are actually pretty decent shape. They come with all the bushings intact, nothing torn, so should be a fairly easy install. As long as nothing on the FD is rusted. Beauty. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to clean this up. We already kind of washed it. There's just a lot of grime on it, and I tried to use the clay bar to take it off, but maybe I'm just gonna buffer it, and uh, we'll do it panel by panel. Yeah, I'm probably gonna take off the front bumper and the side skirts too. Look at this. A majority of the parts are being held on by zip ties. You know it's a drift build when. Open the door. Just a, yeah, a couple of soft tappers. One here. What? None here. I just feel like the Ings kit fits the body so well that you don't need much. And another zip tie, of course. And maybe a few bolts in the front. <laughs> Nope, zip ties. <laughs> cool. That's actually it. That's like 10 bolts less than my FRS wide body. Bruh, easy. Right, so now we got those off. Our goal is to fix this. It's all good, we got a lot of practice on the E36 the past two weeks. This is gonna look immaculate, I promise. The other side skirt, gross. Already looking so much better. Damn. Sunny got started on this side. Bam! I'm gonna address some of this, probably spray paint that black too. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. Maybe spray paint that or just wrap it black. <laughs> this is what it used to look like. You look really close, pretty weathered, but we were able to get it back to gloss black shiny. Mm, so much better. This takes a little bit of work and patience. <laughs> this guy's for sure been doing backflips on the roof. Look, it has as many dimples as my FRS. Standing on it to take photos and stuff. I approve. Already looking so much better. Mmm. Immaculate. And you know what? I decided I'm just gonna refurbish and clean up the engine bay as well. So uh, I'm gonna take out this engine plate cover, try to get off as much of this black as possible, and then we'll respray paint this black. I'm also gonna go to the bolt store and we'll replace all of the rusted bolts. Because as you can see, tons. <laughs> Maybe even get new clamps too. Just basically clean up the engine bay, pretty up everything in here. Lots of rust, but so much potential. I just have a feeling the previous owner took it to all of the events he's ever wanted to take it to and probably was like, you know what, I've had enough of this RX-7, I'm just going to sell it off to someone in North America and onto the next build. And here we are. Little Filipino-Canadian kid living in Alberta with a 1JZ swapped RX-7. Cool.
Alright, time for the trim restore. So, this is what you got, and I've already tested it on a little bit of it. Basically makes it look like it's wet all the time. to move the R7 because Sunny's taking his BRZ out. But the full body polish is complete. It was just like one round, one stage. I didn't have to be super thorough for the black paint to really shine. You know what? It was actually really immaculate. It just needed a good polish. God damn. It's like black mirror finish. And I was able to get rid of that discoloration that happened back here. Um, I don't know what happened there, but yeah, that was just like surface gloss. So full body polish, man. The RX-7 is looking mint. So for the Inks kit, we got the front bumper and the side skirts to do some Bondo work on, uh, which won't be too bad because we had like two weeks of practice on the E36, and that was way more strenuous because we actually had to lift both front fenders to match the hood, so. That's what makes me stutter, man. People watching. This kid was doing some gang signs in the background, and I just, bruh. <laughs> neighbor that really pisses you off. Except mine's not as obnoxious. What are you doing? Uh, this, the diameter of this is too big, so I'm just shaving down like a millimeter. It's the drift button, or oh. like the e-brake. You're making it custom fit? Yeah. This is not for my car, apparently. You do you, bro. Yo, what up, Sunny? I was talking to Oh, which one? Which one? The sky is falling! <laughs> This is probably one of the easiest ways for you to shape out a decent foundation or a structure. And I mean, after the Bondo on top dries, you can peel it off if you don't trust the tinfoil, but basically like metal okay and from here we actually have something to put the bondo on top of it's all about sanding and shaping after that like a sculpture class i've been up for three nights my eyes are bloodshot red damn i want to see the sunshine it's getting to my head one look in the mirror don't like what i find I that's what it looks like right now okay we got the side I'm gonna try to put something underneath to push this up while I put the bundle on top and uh, hopefully it'll keep its form. And then there's just a little bit of damage on the side here, but that's easy cake. So I actually did like one thin layer just to level this because it was pushed down but we'll wait for this to dry. In the meantime we can paint our engine cover. We'll start with the flat black primer and then we'll add some sparkle. Alright. So I figured while we wait for a Bondo to dry, we'll go ahead and paint our valve cover. We're just going to repaint it gloss black, but uh, as you can see, I took the liberty of masking off the Toyota symbol. We're going to keep that silver, and to mask it off, I just used leftover vinyl wrap, and I meticulously cut around the toe. Yeah, let's just paint away. Arms, 
see, you know what working on your own car reminds me of? Arts and crafts time. It's just a lot more intricate and a whole lot more expensive. That's four layers of the flat black primer. We'll just let that sit. It is drying perfectly into this mat. And then we can hit it with some gloss black. Dude, I thought that was pollen. Those are bugs. What? All right, we spray painted it. Oh my God, all this pollen and shit. Okay, you know what, that's okay. You guys can barely see on camera. I'm not gonna say nothing. So for those wondering, uh, the paint that I use is this Rust-Oleum stuff, so it does protect from rust. This uh, creme clad. I think that's French. Creme clad. Creme clad. Creme. I, okay. I think I'm just gonna end this video. I gotta get used to the idea of not trying to fit so much into one video because that's what drags my vlogs past 14 to 20 minutes long, and sometimes I find that it's a little too long for a vlog. So in the future, we're gonna try to get it closer to the 10 minute mark. And uh, yeah, other than that, we'll wait for the paint on that to dry to install. Hey, oh my God, now there's an ant on it. It's not even dry. We'll also save the rest of the Ings kit repair for tomorrow once all of the Bondo is dry, once everything's dry. I'm just excited to put the RX-7 back together and have it actually like functional and clean to my standard. I mean, it is someone else's project build and it's been pretty bashed around, uh, you can tell. But I find the more time I put into it and the more effort I put into cleaning it up, uh, the more I fall in love with it. As usual, if you want to get updated when new videos come out on this channel, hit that sub button with notification button ticked. Drop some likes and leave some good vibes in the comments. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. I'm sorry.